all the warp is measured out and I'm tying in my choke ties. I'm going to tie them in, in several different places here. Uh, normally, like I said, if you were doing the four shaft uh, weaving or even with like a bigger rigid heddle and these were in their color order, you'd want to tie the warp cross right here. But the way I'm doing this, uh, because I did my threads like this and I'm not going to um, warp them like this, even though I kind of like it like this too, but I, I had a plan. But anyway, <laughs> um, that might change. So if I was, if I had set them up in the actual order that I was going to warp them in, then I would want to tie the cross in like this and then um, have the choke ties woven through here so I could keep these in this particular order. But I got to say that even when I do it like this and I've tied them off in bundles of 10, I still have these like chunks of threads like this all still get all tangled up even still. So I still wind up having to do what I'm going to do anyway. I guess I, I don't know if I'm doing it wrong in that case or it's just the way it is, but at any rate, that's a good way to do it. So I'm going to place a few more choke ties and I'm going to go ahead and cut off. When I got to the end here, uh, what I did is I wound this around a few times and then I cut it. So when it springs back, it won't be too short. So when I line these guys up, that's why I've got these choke ties here. When I, I will cut down this middle right here. And these will all be about the same length. These are all tied pretty close here to the end. And it'll keep these pretty much in order. And what I'll do is, this is the end. I will use this one right here because they should all be the same length from here. And I will tie this on. And these little guys that hang over at the end, I'll just clip those off. So they're just like little extras just to make sure that um, I'm not stretching this one real hard and it becomes shorter. The last, whichever one of this last one will become shorter than all the other ones. So it's just a little something I do extra to keep, you know, from having one real short one. And after this, I get these guys all off. I'll warp and I will show you the heddle after it's warped. Okay. I think this video is going to be about getting as many silly camera angles as I can possibly get. But it's just uh, basically at this point the only way I can work with this. So I have all these little cut up pieces of cardboard. And I'm going to put those as spacers onto the warp. You can see the warp is all tied. And I'm going to use these as spacers. There are lots of things you can use as spacers uh, besides little pieces of cardboard. You can use, uh, some people use cut up mini blinds. I don't have any mini blinds to cut up. Actually, I don't have any mini blinds at all. Um, you can use paper. I want something stiffer than paper, so I'm using uh, little pieces of cardboard, which I have plenty of. So there are all kinds of things you can use. Because I know someone's going to say in the comments, well, you could use such and such. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm using what I have. And that's little pieces of cardboard. So use what you got. I've heard all kinds of things being used. So I'm just going to slide these in here. And I got this little extra piece because um, the cardboard was not long enough to go across. So that's what the extra piece thing is about. Make sure it's nice and even. Okay, because I have that bar thing um, across the top. Um, it's like an apron rod. I really want to make sure that when I do the first couple turns that I put that in the right spot. So I don't, you don't normally, well, I don't normally put it uh, one every few inches like that, but just so I can cover that apron rod. Now, it's good. now I'm holding this tight here, and this is what they call the yanking crank method, and uh, that's the way. There are other ways, too, to weigh down your warp. So if at any point you ever want to talk about ways to weigh down your warp so that you can warp by yourself, uh, there's lots of those different ways. When I'm doing the rigid pedal loom and I'm not direct warping, then I don't really worry about uh, anything besides just the yank and crank. 
it's not so important that you're, you've got a lot of tension on the warp. That's not what's important. What's important is that um, the warp is even. The tension is even all the way across. So you that you definitely want to make sure that you have even tension all the way across the warp. So you have to hold it have to hold it right or what what will happen is you'll pull more on the sides and you won't have the tension here so just be careful about that and then I, every once in a while i'll see a few strands where i didn't quite catch them in the warps i have to kind of go back go very slowly with it the loom is warped all tied on the front the apron bar and I'm ready to weave. And I can honestly say I, I don't like this warp at all. <laughs> um, but if you know me, that's pretty much the way it always works. I almost never like anything that isn't some solid black or gray or anything like that. But I'm moving on with the weaving part. And this is just going to be plain weave. Uh, no spicy pickup. None of that kind of stuff. I'll just kind of wing it. As I alternate through the uh, weft colors using the same colors as the warp. Or I might just use the purple so it's not uh, so much um, of a pattern. Um, I'll check it out and see what I actually decide. Or just be spontaneous. And I'll get back to you in a little bit as I start to weave. Here's a little bit of the weave so far. Uh, as you can see, it's a weft face weave instead of a warp face weave or a balance weave. And that's basically because I have two threads in the heddle slots, but I only, I'm only weaving the weft with one thread. So that changes the balance of the weave. Things turn out pretty nicely. And um, I am putting... Uh, pieces on the fabric beam, the cloth beam. So basically as I'm turning the warp beam, and if you remember uh, in the other segment, I put all the little um, separators, warp separators, up there when I was warping. Well, as I turn and bring the fabric onto the cloth beam, the little separators fall out. And I take them and I stick them underneath the cloth beam so that it'll grip and it won't slip so you can see it peeking out right there. Oh, what I need to mention, uh, just in case you didn't know, for my beginners, let me put this here, is that when you are weaving, hmm, hopefully I set the right spot, because uh, one of the biggest things people always worry about is their salvages or their ends. You want to know how to keep your ends a little neat and tidy. And I, I'm a little obsessed with salvages. Uh, more obsessed than I actually really need to be. Because if you do what I'm about to say, then they generally line up pretty well. At any rate. So, we're bringing this across. And when you bring this across, you want to make sure that the warp is um oh, sorry the weft is kind of like in an arc give me a moment okay so instead of pulling it completely straight across you don't want it to be completely straight you kind of want it um, higher on this end and then just gently slope down kind of like this ideally if i wasn't holding the the phone while I'm recording, um, this would be a little higher up down here, but you want to watch that because this is what makes the, the salvages grab and pull in. So let me fix that for you. Okay. So ideally it should be like this. Oh, that's, that's better. And when I beat with the, uh, heddle, or if you're using the four chef, of course, um, you're using the beater for that. But anyway, when I make the beat, or you might even use the um, shuttle. Uh, when I make the beat, I don't have huge draw in over here. And like I said, if I wasn't holding the phone at the same time, 
I would have had something that looked more like this. And it would have pulled that pretty much exactly where it needs to be. And a little drawing. So since I didn't, I'm just going to tug that a little bit. Just a little bit. Okay, not real. Don't try to tug it in as snug and tightly. Because when the um, garment is full, it's, you're still going to get that draw in. So don't try to snug it up real close there. Give it a little bit of room. Okay. I also am not super obsessed about making this across super straight. Don't do that. I'm going to beat it again with either the heddle or actually after I've changed sheds, I might beat it again as I'm coming across with my, my stick shuttle here. So that'll straighten it out. And it, I mean, it doesn't have to be perfectly straight anyway. This is a, a beautiful handwoven garment. And I'm not saying just throw in mistakes. It's not a mistake. It just adds character to it. And the eye in general is not really going to be able to tell if this is super straight here or super straight here or super straight here. I mean, if it's seriously wonky, then you want to fix it. But otherwise, you don't have to be totally obsessed with whether it's super straight. Uh, this, as big as the pack down, you can see that these straighten out pretty well. And when it's full, they'll kind of move around and settle into position. Okay, I hope that made sense. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and finish the garment. And I'll start the video again when I get to the end of the cloth. I'm coming up to the end soon. And it's only been a little while and I'm almost done. And I keep taking a bunch of breaks to eat and answer the door and all that kind of stuff. So I would actually probably have been done. But I can see here I'm getting at the end. And you know how when you're doing something, you're thinking to yourself, well, I'm almost there. And you really want to know how far you are. I think what I'm going to start doing is on my strips I'm going to start marking them with numbers and as I um, wind for it and they fall off then I'll know what the number is and I'll know how far I have to go until I get to the end so that would be pretty cool um, I also kind of wish I hadn't been rather late of the day and I had actually put the phone on the tripod because then you could have watched me weave like those what are they called the ASMR videos where you just hear the sound of the heddle clicking back and forth into place. Uh, some people find that com comforting. So maybe the next weaving pass when I put Jacob on the loom, I'll just make a video in like half time where you just kind of watch me weave. Uh, more importantly, is it's the, the actual motion of watching how someone throws a shuttle or moves a shuttle. Um, and when you get that rhythm down, when you're weaving, it makes the process smoother. You have muscle memory for weaving, just like you have muscle memory for spin, spinning or knitting or any of that kind of stuff. So it may look awkward uh, periodically when I'm stopping and pausing to demonstrate for the video. But when I'm actually doing the weaving, um, there's a rhythm I have that I get as I go along and uh, a precise muscle movements that make everything nice and smooth. Okay, I am almost at the end. Next time I turn the video recording on, I will be taking this thing off the loom. It's finished, ready to come off of the loom. And I left the long tail here in order to hemstitch. But to be honest, I'm really not a big fan of hemstitching. I don't really like to do it at all. So I'm not going to hem stitch, and I don't most times. It's just as simple here as uh, undoing the knots. And I'm going to knot across as I undo each knot. And I'm thinking I'll probably do them in groups of three. Maybe it, you know, a lot of times it depends on how big I want the knots. Sometimes the knots are big. Sometimes they're small. I think I want these small, so I think I'll do them in groups of three. Um, no more than, yeah, no more than groups of three. Pull that off, then I wind it back, pull off the other side, and do the knots up, then I'll be ready. Now, I could take this and, and weave it back in. Sometimes I do that. Sometimes I'll tie it in with the fringe. And I think what I'll do in this case is I will, since the color will be different, I will 
weave it back to the position of the other purple and then tie it into the fringe from there and then snip it off. So off the loom, I have tied my knot and this is the part where no one likes weaving in the ends. So I follow the path and under, over, under, over, under, over. Where I want it to wind up is, is here because that's where the, the similar purple uh, threads are. And I'm going to pull it through here and then tie it right in a knot along with the other purples right here on both sides. All done. So I just want you to see how this looks before it's finished, sweat finished. And we'll see how closely together uh, the fabric pulls when it's put through the finish. So. I'm not going to actually show me doing the finished process. I'm just going to go in there, put some hot water in, soap it up, just wring it out, bang it around a couple times in the sink, uh, <laughs> put some cold water in, repeat it a couple different times till it's sufficiently full the way I'd like it to. And that's basically my process for finishing. Then I'll let it drip dry. Then I'll check out what it looks like from there. Here it is finished. Zoom in. Thin as a wool I felt, but there doesn't seem to be much difference here between um, what it was when it came off the loom and now. Not quite so much draw line. I did swish it quite a few times. Um, I rolled it up and squeezed it, flipped it over give it a bit of a scrub so you can see well I don't know if you can see but I can see a bit of the halo from the long wool coming out thin as a wool that felt pretty readily and here are the ends uh, they are not going to um, fray really badly when I cut them like I said thin felt pretty nicely so this is pretty nicely full what I always think is interesting is how close these two are in length. I didn't measure them when I tied them off. I just kind of eyeballed them. So they're pretty close. And I'm going to fold them on top of each other, cut them all across even. And I'm going to steam a few sections of this that were um, crumpled when I rolled them and squished them to make them all straight. And basically this is done. And so far, it's 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 a scarf for now. I don't know if I plan to do anything else with it. We'll see. I'll steam it, pack it up, put it into a bag, and if anything changes, I'll pull it out and turn to something different. All right, thank you, everybody, for joining me in this Weave Along. I hope your project turned out just as lovely, and you can share your projects with me and everyone else on Instagram under the hashtag spin to weave along. Have a great day.